Hey everyone. I have Sai on today and I'm so excited. She should be on in a minute. It's gonna be a good one. Hi, Anna. Oh my gosh, it's been forever. Here she is. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good. Where are you? I'm at my house in Jersey. Oh, for some reason I thought you were in the city. No, we left in March and I haven't been back. I miss it so much. Is it not raining there? Oh, it's raining. It's gross here. So what's up? Okay, I just oh. got a shower kind of um, maybe about 15 minutes ago and threw something on. So um, Well, I literally just ran from one live thing to then I came home and I like just jumped out of the car. So I'm a crazy mess this morning. Oh. <laughs> but I am a party. Do we want to wait for a little few more people to get on? I feel like it's still kind of Friday and people might still be working in the middle of the day, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, I'm so excited to have you on the nap series. Thank you. Um, you are like the queen of getting things done, not just at nap time. I don't even know if you're, you're one child, I would say, not Scout, but I don't know if they nap anymore, but you're like the queen of getting things done. I mean, you have so much going on during the day. I, I don't know. I don't feel that way. <laughs> I mean, like, I just feel like between, like, you have, like, a TikTok video that's, like, oh, she looks amazing, and somehow she just threw together a TikTok video, and the next thing you know, you're cooking everyone dinner, and then it's just, like, I'm, like, oh, my gosh, she is the most productive person I know. I think I just can't sit still. I, it's in my nature where I just cannot sit still that I feel like I'm actually not doing enough if I'm not, like, doing um, Yeah, no, I, I feel you. I'm the same way. Like, I need to be, like, complaining. I need to be complaining that I'm too much in order for me to feel productive. I constantly need to be like, I can't believe I have all of this to do. Because if I'm not complaining, I'm not happy. <laughs> right. Like, if you're not complaining about bu how busy you are, you're like, what am I doing? Like, what am yeah. I doing with my life? I, I need to, I need to pick, take on more projects or something. No, my kids don't nap anymore. They, they're oh. like, much. I, I, I can every now and then get Rio to nap. But other than that. No, it's not. Yeah, good. well, Isla's going to drop her nap soon, too. And I feel like they're around the same age. Isla's three and a half. Oh, okay. What about like an hour? Uh, yeah, she does like an hour, hour and a half. And then um, Teddy, he's, I mean, he's still like just giving me the best little naps. He's like two hours. Like, it's awesome. Oh, that's perfect still, though. I know. Yeah. It's great. Fine. But I started this in quarantine because I was, you know, trying to get, obviously, a little time to myself and was like, I wanted to talk, everyone was doing lives, and I was like, this is fun, let me try this out, and then it was just so fun to talk to everyone that was like, you know, just all my creatives, all my cool peeps that are just always doing amazing and fabulous things outside of quarantine, and just like chat with them, and I don't know, it's just like a little break with people with great style. Totally get it, I'm here. Um, <laughs> yeah. But as far as traveling goes, I'm only going to anywhere that we can drive to, so we're not getting on any planes <laughs> Thing. And then we don't want to go anywhere further than three hours because driving in a car with kids is just not fun. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's three hours and under, preferably two hours and under is what we're aiming for right now. So I'm just trying to find things within New York that we can drive to. So it's been a yeah. It looks like you took a really cute little trip just recently. Yes, I went to Canoza Hall. I'm going to tell you guys about Canoza Hall. It's so cute. I've never heard of it. It's new. It's brand new. Um, okay. It's at skills. It's right on the lake. Um, the lake is non-motorized, so you can swim in the lake. You can canoe. So we did a canoe, and then my daughter and my husband took a canoe out, and they went swimming together by themselves. It was really cute. Rio was oh. my He was like, I'm not into this. He was not about that life at all. Yeah. Like but it's really, um, it's not a bread and bre breakfast. It's more of an upscale chic boutique in the middle of Catskills. Um, there's only 22 rooms, but it's on. It's located on like 55 acres. So there's a pool, a spa, a um, sauna. There's oh. air yoga, Pilates. 
it's really nice. How long did it take to get there? Two hours, maybe an hour, 50 minutes. That's not bad at all. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely go back in the fall. It was really nice. Oh, that's amazing. You wanna check that out. Um, well, I mean, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about anyways. I feel like the reason that you're so captivating with the blog and your YouTube is because obviously you have amazing style, but it's always all been all about your experiences with your kids and having great style. And I think that that's why people just love watching you. It's like addicting because you feel like you're there and you kind of get this inside track to all cool things in New York City. And I think that that's just why it's so fun to watch. And I was just wondering, like, now that you know you've gotten such a following and you're getting bigger and bigger is it still just as much fun does it feel like sometimes it's a little bit more work now that you have big partnerships like how has it changed since you first started i mean it's obviously changed as far as i have more opportunity to say no to things I mean, when i first started out i was very like oh my god i was like oh shit, this is a job like I I can make money from this. I get free to go to places. Whereas at that time, I was kind of like, okay, if I'm going to do this full time, I would take on more partnerships, even though I wouldn't necessarily support that brand. But, mm -hmm. and you know what? Those are my learning mistakes. And those are the things that you do when you first start out because you need the money and, you know, it is your job. But as Would you I've do it again? No, I like, never. if you were just starting out, would you do the same kind of taking on all of those jobs just to get I mean, going? I would. I wouldn't lie about that. I would. I mean, there's back then, I've, I've evolved so much. I've learned so much. Mm -hmm. So back then, some of the partnerships that I took on, I took on because that's who I was then. You know, mm -hmm. I've bought in the last six and a half years. So um especially things like wellness like i'm way more conscious about exactly what's in my food and what's in my supplements and things like that versus back then i knew a lot about food but i wasn't really as nuts as i am now um so yeah i mean i've just evolved and i and i i don't i really wouldn't change a thing and then now yeah i do work with a lot of bigger brands but again it's a me to be like, hey, I know this is a really big deal and you guys are offering me a lot, but this just doesn't feel right. Like I, mm -hmm. I pride myself on transparency and being honest. Um, I don't want to just take on any brand just because of the money. So yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's been a lot and I don't feel I still am having a lot of fun. It's been it's actually more fun now than it was before. I felt like I was working so much harder back then to just be seen and be heard and be the person in the room. And especially a person of color. I feel like there's not a lot of us in this industry. And I was just kind of like, should I feel like very grateful that I'm at this table? Or like, how should I like, how should I approach this? How should I feel? Whereas now I'm a lot more comfortable. I've made a lot more connections and I know, and, and I can also speak up like, this is not right. Or, you know, I can say certain things. So things have definitely evolved and I feel like I'm in a much better place now than I was when I first started. I think it's really nice to hear that honesty of, you know, I think a lot of people think that whether you're in the same space as influencers or just in general, a lot of people think like, oh, well, they were always like that and they were always able to kind of command you know, a, their own confidence or a room or whatever it might be. But it, that takes a lot of growing and people kind of forget that, that it takes a lot of time to get to that place and feel that confidence. 1000%. Yeah, it took me a few years. Definitely. How does Locked it feel to be and uh, have a spot at the table now? It feels really good. It feels really good to have a spot at the table. It feels good to have a spot at the table and be heard. So, totally. Total totally. Day. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> So as far as, you know, getting uh, other women that whether, no matter what industry they're in, whether they're trying to be in the fashion industry or trying to start a blog or whether they're in a completely different industry altogether, especially I think moms and working moms, I think confidence is a, a big challenge for a lot of people, especially during such uncertain times. What do you feel like kind of helped you as you were on that journey? Like what would be your advice to other women to give them like, this is how you're going to be able to grow your confidence. This is how I did it. I think confidence comes within. I mean, you can see when there's nothing sexier to me than when a woman walking into a room who just 
con like it's it exudes confidence like you can just see her and you're kind of like she glows and she radiates she owns the room like she mm -hmm. pulls your attention with saying a word and i think that speaks volumes um i think when it comes to confidence i mean especially as a woman and being in such an industry that is very competitive of course you're going to compare yourself but do your best not to i always say you can look at other people and be inspired but don't ever try to duplicate you're one of a kind they do do what you do, take the inspiration, take what you get from it, spin it a little bit and just make it your own. And then at the end of the day, a lot of these people are just smoke and mirrors, like to be honest. Like it's a it's lot true. of mirrors going on, guys. This is the same thing that you would see like Matthew McConaughey driving down the coast of Spain in his Lincoln. Like, are we do we really think he's driving a Lincoln down the coast of Spain? No, it's not happening. It's an advertisement. It's smoke and mirrors, a lot of it. And I think a lot of times, if, especially if you see influencers that don't have a lot of transparency, you need to take their lifestyle with a grain of salt. And I've, mm -hmm. I've come as far as following influencers that made me feel bad about myself. Like there are, there are, I feel like there are several types of content, some content you learn from, some content you're inspired by. And then there's the content that you feel like shit about yourself. <laughs> totally. This girl has an amazing life. Like, she was like born rich and she's like born like born to do all these things. Body's perfect. And like meanwhile, she's probably like crying herself to sleep at the end of the night. <laughs> right. And I just like just take a lot of this stuff with a grain of salt and um just live your own life. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing at the totally. end of the day. Totally. Um so what I like to always ask everyone, but Everyone, I think, has a secret sauce, obviously, like just like you were saying, like do your own thing and do what makes you special and what makes you stand out. So what is your secret sauce? I think I think that I don't take myself too seriously. I mean, I like to... I think that that's your secret sauce, too. I, I just love how, like, I just think it's so funny. Like, I'm laughing with you. I'm not laughing at you. But, like, I always just am, like, laughing out loud when I'm watching your stories. It's just, like, your sense of humor with everything is the best. I love it. Yeah, I don't take myself too seriously. It's, like, you got to have fun in life. I do some of these campaigns that I'm still in, like, awe about it. Or some of these things that are just, like, very luxurious. Don't get me wrong. I love a good, luxurious lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just got to make fun of yourself, right? It's just like, who do you think you are? Yeah, like, who am I? <laughs> you just have to laugh. I mean, life is so short. You need to enjoy it. Stop being so serious about everything. So that I think that that and, and, and I'm just pretty transparent. If you ask me something, as long as it's not too personal, I'll pretty much answer you. Yeah. And what is, you think, like, the proudest moment up until this point? I mean, I think you just are, you're going to be, like, huge and continue to grow. But you're a pretty big deal right now. So what do you think is the proudest moment you've had so far of your career? I've had so many proud moments. I really have. Um, it's funny because I'm so go, go, go. But at the same time, I preach, like, meditation and being present. And just, <laughs> I was like... Because usually when I do something and I've accomplished it, I check it off and I just move on. I don't ever give myself time to reflect on like, whoa, that was like a really big deal. Instead, I'm like, wow, that's great. Move on. What's next? What's next? And you really need to kind of slow down, just be present and be grateful for everything that you've done. Like, that's just my biggest thing. I just have to say probably it sucks because you forget a lot of it until it pops back. Oh, shit, I did do that. Um, Anything working with my children, I think, has been amazing, especially if any type of video content. But I think our largest thing to date that I was kind of like, whoa, is when we did the Zara campaign together. And yeah. We flew to London, and uh, it was London's first time in first class. So, Zara, thank you for that. And they, he was like, oh, my God gosh this is first class excuse me can I have some apple juice and then she like there was a partition that went up so she literally kept putting the partition up so she could not see me and then the apple juice she would like roll it down I'm like okay Mrs. Jefferson like you're moving on who do you think you are <laughs> you're like girl we got it we got it but it, the video aspect of it, because it was like a Mother's Around Mother's Day campaign, the video aspect of it was they separated us. So I couldn't hear what she was saying and she couldn't hear what I was saying. 
So they recorded these like very emotional raw moments. And um, when they asked her these certain questions and I finally saw the video, I was like, oh my God, this is falling. So Sweet. And I'm not very, I'm not one to show a lot of emotion, but I was like behind closed doors. I'm like, that was so sweet. And uh, yeah, and just seeing us on their homepage and everything. And it was just a very nice experience. Yeah, that was a big deal. It was huge. You should, that should be one of your proudest moments because it was, it was amazing. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it was good. It was a good job. It was a good job. I have a couple of um, like quick fire questions for you. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. All right. What's your power color? Black. Chic. <sighs> Mine too. So chic. Okay. What's the most ridiculous thing you bought in quarantine? An eyelash curler that he that's heated. <sighs> what? That's I love dangerous. It. It's like a heated eyelash curler, and it's ridiculous, but I like it. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm gonna... <laughs> Sounds scary. I'd like burn my eyelashes off. <laughs> okay. Go to quarantine snack. Honestly, I gotten into these um, <laughs> these textured soy uh, vegan jerky. Totally not good for you. What? Because it's textured soy, which means it's super processed. I, I was starving, accidental buy, and I bought it, and I was like, shit, this is actually pretty good. So <laughs> it's, 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 my, it's my thing. Okay. Uh, most ridiculous thing you've done – to keep your kids occupied, just to get a little peace and quiet. I gave them melatonin to go to bed. <laughs> I mean, not that crazy. It's fine. <laughs> I got a um, seven. Best, com best compliment you've ever received. Uh, thank you for being relatable. Mm, that's a good one. Uh, vintage or new? New. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, who's your favorite powerhouse leading lady? Mm, there's so many. You can give me a couple if you want. There are so many. I love Chrissy. Okay. I love that Chrissy Teigen speaks her mind. Unfortunately, she's in a little bit of a hot water situation. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but we, no, won't no, no, we won't talk about it. But I do love that she, like, literally speaks her mind doesn't care like she's like this is my body this is it this is what you're gonna get just she's unapologetic which I love and I think that in a society of women we're constantly like apologizing about something whether it's and I catch myself doing this too whether it's sending too many emails for example I send one person six emails in the morning because I'm wired and I'm like hey sorry for all the emails like what am why am I really apologizing I, I'm working or sorry I have to politely decline like it's just why are we apologizing just be more straightforward and just say what it is. Well, I love any woman who's very just unapologetic and she's just here so, yeah, I mean, like you were saying, women with confidence and when they walk into a room, that's the thing that I always admire the most when people are just unapologetic about themselves. They're like, this is who I am, and I'm proud of it. Agree, 1,000%. Um, okay, last one. If you could raid one person's closet, who would it be? Hmm. I mean, I have a pretty good closet. You do. <laughs> but if I had to raid... One clothes time. and like closet and the clothes that are in the closet it's, it's both it's funny because i mean i don't really i love things and sometimes i say i want them i really don't need for anything at the end of the day it'd probably just be my best friend like we she's also a fashionista and she has so many bags that i would love to mix and match and usually she lives in california when i go visit her i really don't pack anything because i just raid her <laughs> It's actually ideal because we wear the same sizes. And, um, yeah, it would probably just be her. I'm really not – I don't really lust for celebrity closets or anything like that. Yeah. I just – I love that answer because it's so true, right? Thing. Like, it's just, hey, just in my own world, <laughs> I guess. So, yeah, yeah, just my best friend's closet. Okay. Um, I just saw that someone actually sent us a question. Um they want to know more about your husband. I know that there's a lot, you know, he doesn't show up that often or rarely ever um, on your content, but give us a little inside scoop. Okay. Well, um, 
What are we like, how long have you guys been together? And where did you meet? Like, a little bit more of like anything about your you and your husband, because we always see your kids. Right. So my husband is, um, I don't show his face pretty much because this is just not his jam. Not someone who he doesn't even have one app. It's actually rather annoying. When <laughs> when he checks our Instagram, like, because he likes to look for trolls, and he'll tell me about it. So he actually, like, trolls them. And he checks it on the computer, like, on the web. Like, <laughs> You're like, how are you doing that? He <laughs> doesn't have an Instagram account. He doesn't have, like, the actual app. Um, he's just very uh, minimalist. He doesn't, like, his closet looks nothing like mine. Like, his closet's super small, has probably, like, four shorts four shirts and like wears it on repeat he's like an like a athleisure type guy very hands-on with our kids like usually when I go different places and everything we didn't have a nanny it was actually my husband that was taking care of his own kids so uh, yeah he's just very much so a family man and he kind of just lets us do our thing and he likes mm -hmm. Eat. doesn't take my photo or anything I don't have a husband an Instagram husband he's totally not into that he like would cut my eye out and be like here just check the photo and like walk That's away my husband is <laughs> and just walk <laughs> super funny we have the same sense of humor very very supportive um he does get annoyed when I'm on my phone too much so I do respect those boundaries like he will check me and be like hey it's family time like come on let's be a little bit present um, let's see, what else, what, oh, how did we meet? We met 11, 12, 12 years ago? We met 12 years ago in Costa Rica. I was oh. on a trip and I was severely hungover. And um, <laughs> I was sitting in a corner somewhere, like, you know, when you're hungover and you have, you lack all personality. I didn't mm -hmm. want to take and he was at a swim up bar. He looked a mess, by the way. And I walked- As did you, I'm sure, if you were that hungover. <laughs> Yeah, like, we're just both a mess. And, um, yeah, he was talking to a friend of mine, and I just sat there, and he insulted me, actually, because I wasn't talking. I was, like, actually, like, I just had resting bitch face. And he um, just insulted me. He said something very insulting that was could have went south, and it could have been bad yeah. if it was a good sense of humor. But luckily, I did have a good sense of humor, and it was actually pretty funny. And um, after that, we kind of just started talking, and then we went to some barbecue down the block, random, random. And um, the next day, we ended up leaving. And the, the following week, he actually came to New York to visit me, and he courted me. It was, like, the sweetest thing. Like, he came to New York, and he came with uh, – he lived in Montreal, by the way. So oh, okay. He came with, like, all of these flowers, and I didn't feel good, actually. So he came with, like, a, a – like a care package of like Alka-Seltzer and all these things. And um, it's so funny because I wanted to cancel. I was like, oh God, this guy's coming. I don't feel good. Like, oh, I don't want to be bothered. I made him stay in a hotel. I was like, you're not staying with me. You're a stranger danger. Right. <laughs> that's amazing. But, I mean, I'm like, that, I, that's crazy that he like took the chance and was like, I'm going to go see this girl in New York. Like, literally like five days later. And um, no, it was really sweet. And he actually, he took me to, um, number one, Hervé Leger was out back then. It was like, he took me mm -hmm. to interview, got me an Hervé like outfit. To wow, he was like, he like watched everything. I'm like, Mr. Big, New York City, I'm going to see this girl. Mr. Big, it was so sweet. And I was like, wow, this is the first date. This is how it's gonna be. So he like did all these things and we went to, he had a driver pick me up. We went to a really nice restaurant. Oh, Mariah Carey came to this restaurant that night. And our what? Roommate, Mariah Carey came to this restaurant and I was like, ew, let's get out of here. It's gonna be like a shit show. And he was like, really? You don't want to see Mariah? I was like, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. So the whole thing was really funny. And then after that, that was like the last outfit he ever bought me. <laughs> that was 12, I was like, Wait a minute, did you just buy me an outfit to get me and then like that was it? <laughs> right. What happened to the gifts? Do I get any more gifts or like is it over? So anyway. Oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, that was like the um we ended up two years we dated for two years um at long distance and then um I got pregnant with London and we've been together ever since. That's awesome. I love that. What a like whirlwind little dating story. It's amazing. Pretty funny.
But um, London, I ended up moving to Montreal for a year and a half. London was born in Montreal, so she is a little Canadian. And um, it was just too cold for me. And I'm just such a New Yorker. I need to, like, really yeah. move. And I just felt like I could not move there. So we ended up moving back. And we've been here ever since. And that was our story. I love it. As now you know him and all that jazz. Oh my gosh, everyone's always dying to know about the husband who's never in the picture, so now they know. I think it's just some mystery to it. Like when you don't know something, it makes it more interesting. But if I was to post him and, and you guys would be so over it, you'd be like, okay, we get it. So, I mean, there's some things that you should just keep to yourself and my husband is one of them. I mean, like I'm someone who shares a lot, like I overshare everything, food in general, like, so it's nice to have something that is personal. I agree. Um, okay, I want to finish up really quick because I know that you are a busy lady. So um, I'm obsessed with your like outdoor areas that you have. I mean, I love all of your decor and your new place, but um, you're just your outdoor like quote unquote day club with Rio in <laughs> London are hilarious. Thank you. <laughs> so cute. So I wanted to see if you have uh, a couple of tips of like everyone's hanging out at home, obviously, and most people are either on their back decks or trying to spend time outside. So what are your tips for making it feel like chic and cool, especially if you have kids? I definitely think outdoor plants. Um, you need some sort of outdoor plants. I think it can just really elevate the mood out there. Um, if you don't want to spend a ton on outdoor plants, like I did, it. I ended up spending a little bit of money on plants, which a little bit more than I wanted because I am a plant killer. And I and I'm trying to get really much better at it. <laughs> but um, Ikea actually has some really awesome plants for like 40 bucks, or maybe even less that you can kind of throw outdoors, you can get a really inexpensive planter from somewhere like Lowe's, or anything mm -hmm. concrete looking planter, that'd be really nice. Um, I have a inflatable pool. <laughs> that I posted. Yes, which are hard to find right now. Like, they, really hard to find. That They're, like, hot real estate right now. Mm -hmm. uh, my other pool right now, I, I don't know what happened. We left for two days. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me show you guys. But now it's, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, died here. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but um, I'm going to have to, like, punch it, punch, punch the dent back out. Yeah, or just flip it over. Or just flip it, flip it, right? So anyway, mm -hmm. if you can just get an outdoor pool and any type of, um, I love a mud cloth, like uh, blankets, like outdoor blankets. I, I'm obsessed with the farmer's market. For anybody who um, follows me, they know that I go to the farmer's market very often and I love to support the vendors there, especially all of the African vendors and uh, yeah. everything made. So I think a lot of these like African pieces that you can bring in such as the, the hand woven bowls and the mud cloths you can put those outside they look really chic with you can put your food and your fruits and things like that in the bowls and mm -hmm. um, you don't have to worry about them breaking or anything like that so just add, like little elements of decor things like that and also places like world market are not too expensive because you don't want to spend a ton on your outdoor stuff especially when it's seasonal but you still want yeah. chic so I think things like World Market are great. Um, I think that's about it. And then planters, I have so many different planters. CB2 makes really good planters, but unfortunately- I have a couple of those. I love them. They're really cute. They sell out so quickly, which is rather annoying. Like they literally sell out as soon as April hits. And then they still have sight, so they get your hopes up high. And I'm like, oh, on and it's like oh we'll deliver in january when it's snowing <laughs> like you're like i don't need it then this doesn't work out for me um i, know. I, I think <laughs> some planters etsy might have some really nice ones too etsy also has mm -hmm. like, a lot of cute outdoor pillows and things like that and yeah. if you have a little bit more of a budget i would say definitely stop by restoration hardware outlet that is my mm -hmm. usually everything is between 40 and 60 percent off and if it's season, you can actually get them to come a little bit. Don't tell them I told you that. But if it's something that is an outdoor piece and you go and buy it, say, February, um, you yeah. can kind of be like, okay, hey, would you guys, like, take extra off or, like, something like that. So I did that a lot. I actually have never been to their outlet. Now I want to go. 
Yeah, there's an outlet in Paramus in New Jersey, and there is an outlet in Brooklyn, um, an industry city. So the one in Paramus is closed on Sundays, in case you guys need to know. Mm -hmm. And then just hire a third party. They have a third party there that will pick up the furniture for you and deliver it. I mean, oh. don't expect white glove service like the regular rush restoration hardware. I mean, they just might drop your stuff off anywhere, but like, <laughs> but at least <laughs> your house, you know? Um, yeah, no, at least it's there. Those are pretty much all of my uh, outdoor tips. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you just, it's not about a ton of stuff, but I think uh, just a couple of chic little touches and your place, I mean, your whole entire house looks beautiful the way that you did it. And I feel like it all came together really good, but the outdoor space is just great and it's perfect because we're all spending so much time in those spaces. Yeah, for sure. I'm just going to be really sad in the fall and we're kind of, not even the fall, the winter, because we still have it in the fall. We bought also, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys know, but you can go to, I, I'm completely over Home Depot right now, but Lowe's, you can go to Lowe's and get um, outdoor heating lamps for like 120 bucks. Oh, I didn't so, think of that. That's such a good idea. I've been putting those, uh, last fall we got some of those, we put them around our table and we just brought some like cozy blankets and we did something like that. Now you can also buy one of those fire pits that you can put right on the table for s'mores. We'll do that mm -hmm. in the of that. But um, yeah, that's it. All right, well, thank you so much. I'm so happy that you came on to chat with me and <laughs> share all of your tips and tricks and secrets and about the infamous husband and you know, all of it. Thanks. Wait, is there any more questions? Let's see. Cynthia is here. She's my, my scout fam. Hey, girl. Hey. Um, I think that's <laughs> it. Advice for single ladies dating in New York City. That's kind oh, of yeah. Because, like, everything is closed at the moment. So it's like, how do you meet people <laughs> anymore? I mean, if you're open to online dating, I think that's still an option what do people do now? Because I remember like when I first started dating, my husband was like Tinder, but I heard Tinder's just for hookups now. So like, <laughs> I don't know. It's cause I dated my husband like before Tinder. So I don't even know that world. I'm like very old and out of date on that. A lot of my friends were on Tinder, which I found to be very entertaining. And sometimes I would like look at their Tinder. So it was fun, but I hear good things about hinge. Um, and, but I can't really speak to it myself. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's t dating in New York City is tough when there's no not no interaction as far as bars and restaurants because that's where mm -hmm. I people that's where I used to date. Her. Okay, let me <laughs> let me get off of this thing. Anyway, happy Friday, guys! Um, happy Friday! Thank you so much. All I'll right. talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.